Hey everyone, Andrea here, and welcome back to building on our trip planner application using Power Apps. If you've been following along, you will soon have a fully functioning application that you can start using on your personal trips or trips with friends or family. My friends and I are planning a ski trip this winter, so I've been brainstorming new ways to make this application better so that we can use it on our upcoming trip. I'll be going over how to bring your new entities, fields, and relationships to life by configuring forms and views so that you can use those interchangeably in a Canvas app, a model-driven app, or even a portal. I will also go through how to add a subgrid to tabs in our trip form so that everything lives in one place for our upcoming trip. This is part two of the common data service in Power Apps. Watch my previous video, part one, to learn about creating a solution, entities, fields, and relationships in CDS. So now that I've finished creating my entities, my fields and entities inside of Trip Planner for the relationship tab should look like this. You'll have trip type, destination city, regarding, record, lodging, flight, and activity. Once you have those relationships completed, we're going to create forms. So inside the trip entity, we're going to click on the forms tab and we're going to go to this main information form. This isn't the out of the box form that is provided for you. In order to add to this form, all you have to do is click these fields on the left. So we're going to click on all the custom fields that we've added. zoom in a little bit. We actually do not want to show owner. So all we have to do is click on the owner field and say hide. And we actually want to rearrange these to make more sense. So we'll have trip name at the top. And then we'll move trip type to the top. All we have to do is drag and drop. We'll add the destination city. And come to think of it, we actually don't want to add flight in there yet. So we'll delete. We don't want activity. We'll add that as a tab. And lodging, we don't want that in yet. So we'll move description to the bottom two in front of that. And we have our first form. So this makes sense. We'll have the trip name, the destination city, two from date type. So we'll go ahead and save this. And we'll navigate to components, fields, tree view. Inside components, we are going to add a three column tab. So in this new tab, We'll name this flights. And in this new section, we're going to add a subgrid. And in the subgrid, we're going to look for our flights entity. We'll actually have to go in and change the view for all flights. We'll go ahead and do that later. So now we've added our subgrid. You can see that that appears here. And to see changes on this, we'll go ahead and save and publish. And we'll go and change all of the views for that. So you can see the difference. We'll be changing the views for flights, activity, and lodging. So in order to change the view, we'll go back to our trip entity. And instead of forms, we'll click views, click active trips. And for this view, we're going to just add all the things that are blatantly obvious and important for this entity. We'll go ahead and re remove that. And what we'll need for this um, view, oh, we're in the wrong 
entity. We actually want to go back, click on flight entity, then click on views, click on active flights. Same idea here. Some of the important things, probably the airline name, the arrival time, maybe the departure time. And you can move these columns to your liking. So say maybe you don't want the name. Maybe you just want airline name, departure, arrival, and maybe departing airport. And you can actually drag and drop these as well. So we'll put that there. And once we start adding data, you'll see all of this come to life. We'll save, publish. We'll do the same idea for both uh, activity and lodging after this. So this is what my active view for activity looks like. I have my venue name, my start time, the phone number, and the location. For the lodging active view, I decided that I needed the name, the confirmation ID, the check-in time, and the phone number for easy access. So back on our trip form and back in the flights tab of our trip form, you'll notice that the view is different. This view is the same view that we had when we were adding uh, all of the fields. We have the airline name, the arrival, the departing airport, and the departure. We can add a new flight right out of here. We can run a report, or we can export Excel templates all right here. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing for lodging and activity. We'll go here, components, tab, this new tab here. We'll add a new section, select subgrid. We'll look for lodging now. Select active lodgings, because that's where we made our edits to the view. And right there, you will see our subgrid, which is the entity for um, lodging. We'll change this. to say lodging, click out, you'll see it there. And we still need to add one more, so we'll go back to components, tab, inside tab, we'll click in section, subgrid, and the last thing is activity. And I think I clicked on the wrong activity. There we go. And same thing, perfect. We'll click tab, we'll change this to activity. Click out, and now we have a form for our new trip, but we also have all of the related flights for that trip, all of the related lodging and the activity. The next thing we wanna do is go and edit all of the forms for all of our entities so that all of our fields are in there, all of our custom fields. Once we're done with that, we're going to go and create um, uh, intermediate CDS functionality on the next video. We're going to be adding charts, dashboards, and even calculated and roll-up fields. So we'll add an expense entity and we'll make that calculated field add all of the expenses to a grand total. Join me in next week's video and we'll get right on building on the CDS and building on this trip planner and creating model driven apps, canvas apps. I can't wait. Thanks guys.